Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and first and foremost I'd like to give a big thank you for everyone who have subscribed to my channel. It's almost hitting 1k and I can't believe it. It's really like... I... Yeah, loss of words for a second. Yeah, so I think today's episode will be kind of interesting because I'll be talking a little bit more about Google SEM marketing but it's catered more for people who are perhaps mm, thinking how should I go about doing Google SEM marketing? What do I need to do? If I am a business who is looking to start, how should I start, you know? So I thought today would be kind of interesting because I'm so fortunate that one of the clients that I have actually supported on a pro bono basis, almost, almost, pro bono basis, have agreed to Google SEM data shown on for this episode itself. And they are none other than corner embroidery. So if you guys don't know about corner embroidery, here's the... You can check them out in the description box below. But to give you guys a little bit of background on what is corner embroidery about, they basically specialize in making like gifts. Uh, and let's say you need like custom t shirts, you need something for your company in terms of gifting or corporate gifting, they actually make all this and they are all almost hand sewn. They use computerized uh, embroidery machines to help you craft it out. So if you guys are keen to get any of your t-shirt service done, please check them out below. Um, they are a small business in Singapore and they have recently just gone online. And yeah, we are going to be looking at their results for one month. So yeah, without further ado, let's go! Today-wise, uh, we'll be going through the basics of Google SEM. But some questions that I have gotten from Instagram, thank you so much for giving me your questions. I think one of the biggest ones that I've gotten is, how do I get started? Today we're a pretty interesting episode. I will try to go a little bit deeper into some things and I've gotten some feedback that the previous episode of UTM was pretty useful for some of you but you have preferred it to be longer. Rest assured, um, I might do another episode on UTM perhaps like in episode 7, 8, 9, I'm not sure but do subscribe and stay tuned. Ding! I am Professor Hakase Stanley here to show you Google SEM. Ta-da! So yeah, one of the things that we need to do is to ensure structure. When you're starting anything new, including Google SEM marketing, it's the same thing. We kind of need to have structure. And the first step that I always do is to plan out what sort of ad copies are we going to be doing for the client itself. Simply put, when we're talking about ad copies, right, there is a certain length to it when it comes to Google SEM in terms of the description, in terms of the uh, ad type, in terms of the what, whatever copy we are looking at, there is there is a certain word limit and count to it. So we need to have the finesse to ensure that we keep within this word count itself. And for me, I actually have a simple template to help me and guide me when I'm coming up with the ad copies. We are going to zoom into the ad copy in terms of like how it looks like. So for Corner Embroidery, I did the same thing exactly. So I planned out their copies accordingly on this Excel sheet template. And of course, later on when I go into the ad copy itself, you kind of see how it actually like adds up. And you get to see a little bit of the totality in results wise. So yeah, this is the Excel sheet that we are looking at. And if you look at the Excel sheet itself, it's pretty straightforward in terms of how it works. So I pretty much have the headline text. There's a few headline text. In fact, there's three headline text, but usually I will use headline one and two. This is a good guiding principle already because I don't want to confuse the customer or the client or whoever that I'm building the ads for. To have too many headlines sometimes is a bit confusing. So it's easier on the marketer end that we get the client to approve the general principle and we adapt from there when it comes to the actual ad itself. Or, Sometimes we just stick to headline 1 and 2 because it simply just works already. You don't need to headline 3, but of course, depending on your product and service itself. So for this case, what they are doing is pretty much called the straightforward ads, whereby the copies are also pretty straightforward. Like, uh, I think the first thing we kind of like ironed out was that we wanted to target people who are looking to build the company team morale when we started this ad. So the headline 1 was uh, build company team morale. And next was by making customized t-shirt. And you realize one thing is that there is a total word count over here. And I've set it such that when we exceed it, it will turn red. And if we don't exceed it, it will be still green. So that way, it's like a no-brainer. So even let's say I have a new staff who is looking to set up their ads and stuff. It 
pretty easy for one person to follow. So of course, if you guys want this uh, template, just feel free to like drop me a direct message on Instagram or maybe leave a comment below. And of course, once the ad copy is already done, it's pretty straightforward to jump into the setup of the ads, which I will show you shortly. Right now, we are at the Google Ads page, where you can look at a bird's eye view on how the ad fared. So the total spend that we did for this campaign that lasted for slightly more than one month, slightly, just slightly more than one month, spend is capped at about $500, so in this case, it was $506. And the average CPC, CPC refers to cost per click. Cost per click means that for every click itself, how much on average it costs the company to have that click. So the next question is, how do they derive the number of like click to rate, the clicks itself? So all these are very important questions when it comes to like the ad itself. So now we are going to jump into the t-shirt itself. The t-shirt right now I've set it such that it shows me the total impressions for us, the keyword itself. And in this case, t-shirt has 36,000 impressions. Very impressive. Uh, and the clicks itself, there's about 370 clicks. This means that out of these 36,000 people that have seen the ads, only 370 people clicked onto this ad. And that will form the CTR. But of course, thanks to Google itself, we need not worry too much about how to calculate. Because we can literally click onto average CPC, which tells us the cost per click on average. And for CTR, they will give us the average click through rate. So the question is, is a high click through rate good or a low click through rate good? So this is whereby it depends on your strategy itself. For me as a marketer, generally I go by cost bench benchmarks when it comes to this. So for most industries, I would say generally the CPC varies between $1 to $2 per click on average. And we usually use USD as a parity. But of course everything that's spent over here is in Sing dollars because I'm running an ad for a Singapore client and everything should be translated to Singapore dollars. So I would say for them, their industry-wise is also $1 to $2 in Singapore dollars itself. So how do we fare in terms of this ad-wise? This ad fared better than market because the average CPC is at 0.47 cents compared to $1 or $1.50 per click on average itself. Which means that we did a good job! Yay! So, and the third thing, after we are done with all this setting up of the ads itself and we start to run the ads, it's your cost benchmarks will be your guiding principle. And of course, there's an optimization score that you look at. But generally, what's more important than optimization score is your cost per click on average. For example, you could have an optimization score below 20%. But your average CPC is at 47 cents, 40 cents, or even 30 cents per click. Is that bad? Is that good? I would say this is good, although the optimization score is low. Why? Because optimization score re refers to how relevant your ads are to the audience itself and you naturally drive down your cost. But sometimes with a higher optimization score, you might be paying more per client itself. So it really depends on your objective. And at the end of the day, conversion doesn't actually lie on the ad itself. It lies on your website at the end of the day, whether you have the right content and structure to convert it. Does it make sense? So if the interface is bad, even if you can drive like a million clicks or a million traffic in it, your conversion might be quite shitty on your website end. And I actually covered that on the previous um, vlog itself, whereby I kind of like sh dissect a little bit on what kind of interfaces are better for customer experiences and what sort, not really. So yeah, if you guys haven't checked it out, uh, I've, I've left the link above here so you can just click onto it and yeah, it will give you a good idea hopefully. So I think uh, that is one key thing. Now I'm going to go back into the ads itself. Now we just need to click onto new campaign. And when you click on new campaign, it will ask us whether you want to resume your draft if you have done the draft before or you want to start a new campaign. For the interest of this conversation, we'll be doing a new campaign. So new campaign, when I click onto it, what will happen will be this. It will give us a few options, sales, leads, website traffic, product and brand consideration brand awareness and reach and ad promotion. This is the guided ad. For me, typically, I would go for a create a campaign without a goal guidance because for us, because we are doing keyword research, we actually need to see the sort of keywords that will be suggested. So we will go for create a campaign without a goal guidance. So let's click on this. And then you'll give a few options. Search, display, shopping, video, app, smart, discovery. If you have not like studied Google SEM, there's actually free courses out there to kind of share with you like what is search about, what is display about, what is shopping about, what is video about, what is app about, what's smart and what discovery. So honestly, 
I'll leave the link below, not sponsored, but this link it's where it's your professional certifications, which you then can also put it onto your LinkedIn profile thing, and then also like your other platform as well, and you can say that you're Google certified. I mean, if that matters to you. Okay, so I'm gonna click on search because search is the one that you can identify the keywords, and that is relatively important when it comes to research and of course they will ask you whether you want more website visits phone calls or app downloads so in this case you'll be going for website visits because at the end of the day we are driving leads to your website or rather clicks to your website that will increase your odds of having leads so now so and now they'll ask me for a website so in this case uh, we will just put a random website and uh, I will probably put my company's website for the interest of this conversation itself the seconds media.org and let's go so now they ask me whether I want to resume so I'll obviously will click on to start new because I'm trying to show you guys how it actually works so campaign name itself for example you should label it more clearly but this is test ad so test. we are going to move on so I'm going to put let's say I want to spend ten dollars a day budget so one thing to set a maximum cost per click bid limit right it's important if let's say you know that your industry is extremely competitive and you do not wish to spend more than a certain amount of money per click and it's kind of important so as a marketer usually i'll set maximum cpc one dollar because like we want to get the maximum results without spending burning a hole in the pocket so so now we are finally at the keyword search element and but take note that you can actually name your ad group, ad group as well so i'll just call it like cash ad over here as well and now is where about research so they already when you put your website in they already roughly give you some keyword ideas that you could work on so i'll actually usually if i'm lazy about it i'll add all ideas first and delete but since we are actually spending time to have this session let's just really go into it so seconds media the company that I'm with does more global marketing chinese marketing and they probably pull all these keywords from the website itself the Chinese market, business in China. And the key thing about them is that these keywords suggested to you by Google itself generally has a search volume already. So you can actually rest assured that you won't be using like some keywords that that has no search volume. But of course there are also other third party apps that you can use to really track on keyword ideas and the search density. Like for example Ahrefs, also not sponsored, but I personally use them to do SEO and SEM kind of keyword research as well. So there's quite a number of keywords. Once you actually have all these keywords added into it, don't rush into setting up your ads immediately. Like just, uh, in fact, I would say add all ideas inside if you want to really have a good idea and copy it, copy it out, put onto like a Microsoft Word document. So once you save it already, you can pretty much research on them later on. So one, one key thing to take note of, right, especially when you're new at Google SEM, don't rush into setting up your ads. Really research a little bit more. And what do I mean by that is that once all these keywords you have seen it, you can actually Google for them online. And I'll show you guys a little bit more. For example, if I want to do, I want to use this keyword called the online marketing. I just want a keyword that's uh, identified within the document itself. I use incognito window to search for these keywords itself. And when I search for these keywords, naturally, and I will see like some of the ads. So in Cognito, you know, it's like a private window on Google itself and it allows you to see a little bit more about how like um, the ads work out. And let's uh, go into some details, right? Let's say I'm going to LinkedIn, online marketing itself. This is some of the things that we can see. And Salesforce is CRM, so they are naturally trying to acquire people who are looking for online marketing so that they can funnel it into their CRM itself. And we have Firstcom, which is a digital agency, I believe, uh, that also does social media marketing. And we have online1.gsd.columbia.edu. So I believe they are actually running a digital marketing kind of course program. That's why they're running this ad. So take note, when you're doing research, do not click onto this ad because you don't want to waste their money. I've spoken to videos as well. It's not a good practice to waste your competitor's budget because what comes around, goes around. So if you want other people to waste your budget, feel free to waste other people's budget because it's, it's a negative endless cycle and I believe that as practitioners ourselves we should be doing the right thing even if other people are not doing the right thing you know what I'm saying so with that you kind of have a good idea in terms of how to run ads and set it up do your copies so remember the first step in a way is to structure your ads by having the ad copy done in an excel template if possible like if you don't have an excel template you can always put it on a word document and count it yourself but it's a bit more troublesome i would say 
The second step will be doing research in terms of the number of keywords you're looking for and what sort of keywords are good and there's a lot of tools they really can go into and to kind of sum it up it's really about testing the ad to make sure the ad benchmark don't exceed the industry benchmark and of course the rule of thumb if you really don't exactly understand the industry is to set a maximum CPC of not more than one dollar so that you can kind of track the entire performance and see how things go. hope this video was valuable for you as much as it was for me when going through it in this vlog and a uh, big shout out again once again to Corner Embroidery for being so open-minded about sharing your data and if I helped you in any way or form with this video, do hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel for more exciting vlogs. Uh, next week will be even more exciting and you can also feel free to leave any form of comments in terms of like what you wish to see for future episodes and I will be happy to share with you more. So with that, I will see you guys real soon and cheers! Bye!